Table Curve is a versatile software package that allows you to do primer estimation of functions that you select and it also allows you to generate many different functions that fit data uh, and allows you to select among these uh, these various different functions. Uh, actually up more than 3,000 functions are uh, are used in this in this program. So let's go and uh, import some data here. So I've got a file that I set up in advance called Rating Curve, and this has flow and stage data for a stream. And let's see, x when I import it, I get this value of or this text string discharge and stage in the main title and I'm just going to move them over to X and Y. So I hit OK and here's the data that I get when it, it's important. This is just uh, a, a plot where the data are connected with lines. So here you can see there are many points right in here and then there are these points right here. These points here are outliers and uh, this is the stage of the function of discharge and so here we've got we get low discharge and low stage stage is the level of the water in the stream and so it doesn't make sense that we would have that point and these points are also outliers but I got this data from the um, uh, USGS so this is an example of the kind of data that you could get and often includes uh, measurement measurement errors. Also, we imported this data as a stage as a function of discharge, um, but for rating curve, we want to have it reversed. We want to have discharge as a function of stage. And the reason for that is because we would measure the stage. This is the level in the stream that's easy to measure. And then if we could measure the stage and determine the discharge, that would be a, a, a big help. In fact, that's the way the rating curves are used. And so we need to reverse X and Y. And so let's go here to the table curve editor. And these are the data, the discharge data and the stage data that we've just imported. And we've got two things we need to do. We have some bad data and so this first data point right here is one of the outliers. And then I've scanned through these data before, and so I think I can find the bad data points. Here, let's see. So there's one. You see it goes uh, 2, up to 4, down to 2. So that 4 there is a bad point and there's another one down here at the end. Okay, so if I click on those, then I'm going to exclude those points. Now, ordinarily, we don't want to exclude data, but in this case, we know that those are some kind of a measurement or error. It's, it's some kind of a bad data point, so we get it out of there. We don't want to use those large values when we do the curve fitting because they'll skew the result. We also want to reverse the X and Y. So turns out it's easy to do. We have a selection here that we can just press and now uh, this is the X value and this is the Y value. So we hit OK and we actually don't need to save the current data. Um, so now the data look like this. We have discharge as a function of stage which is what we want and uh, the, the, the data look like, look like so. All right, so we're now ready to fit the data, and we can do that by, let me see, we have a, we might want to take a look and see about this point. Um, hmm. Yeah, well, I think that's going to be okay. Let's try fitting the data. And so at first we'll use the built-in functions in table curve. And we can 
if we press this one, we'll get all the functions. These are different classes of functions that we could use. But it's fast, so we'll just use all of them. We press that. We see these different uh, bars go across. These are different types of functions, nonlinear, uh, high precision, linear, and so on. Uh, as they move across, the, the uh, fitting process is being done. And now the results are in. And this is rank number one, where the fit has been ranked based on the R squared values. And we see we have this function that fits the data, but we get some kind of peculiar results out here where the function starts oscillating. This is one of these high precision polynomials that um, is something that um, maybe we want for, the, for some application, but probably it's not what we want to use uh, for this one. But nevertheless, this is the, the best fit, and we have a plot of it. And uh, we can also get a list of the different functions down here. Uh, here's the a Fourier series. It's fit uh, number two here. And we can either scroll down the list. Um, and these are all different functions. If you look up here, you see some variations. Um, uh, and now we finally get into these are all these are all big complicated functions that are not described well just described uh, with text now we actually get a list of a function here uh, also a, a polynomial and so up, up here we see the function and then we see the different parameters here and some of the fitting statistics so this might be uh, a function that appeals to us um, Still, it has an awful lot of parameters, uh, but it depends on our application. We might want to go with this. We can scan down and look at, at other ones. Um, this is a, a pretty simple data set, so it really seems like we ought to be able to get a fit that doesn't require this many parameters. This this function actually looks pretty good. Um, fits, it represents the data really fairly well. Let's, um, let's take a look and see how well it can be extrapolated. Um, so let's see. Um, Okay, so if we zoom in along x, we see the fit here, and we see that, well, it goes down and decreases, but now it starts to increase. So if we were to use this function and extrapolate it, um, we would have a result that just doesn't really make any sense physically. So, mm, you know, that's just not really the that that would be a reason I think to to eliminate this uh, particular function. So um, let's go let's close this and let's go and take a look at some other possibilities. Um, so what I did was to select this button here, numeric. And this uh, page gives us the values of the parameters. This is a little bit easier to read than the graph here. These are also the parameter values. But now we have them summarized in this column. We also have the confidence limits of the parameters. So that will be useful to know. Uh, we could also save this as a summary file. There are some other uh, summary statistics here that may be useful for various applications, but this is really the the main summary statistics that I think is useful. Well, the, the function itself, the coefficient of determination, and then these values of parameters and the confidence limits. 
we might want to have the um, the residuals here uh, a plot of the residuals this shows um, pretty good distribution of residuals um, not really a systematic variation along X um, we might want to have a table of data uh, these are the XY values that we imported the predicted values uh, the residuals and the uh, confidence and prediction limits. So this is useful if we wanted to export the data into a plotting package, for example. Okay, so we have many different functions here and this would be uh, potentially useful. But what I really want is to fit a function that a lot of other people might use or do use in fact for rating curves and so I want to fit a particular function and as it turns out the table curve knows 3000 plus functions and it doesn't seem to know this particular function it's a simple power function with a um, uh, with a constant added to it and so what I need to do then is enter that function in as a uh, user-defined function. So what I did was to go here to process, go down to user-defined function, and I'm going to put in a function that has three parameters, and I can give it a name. Let's call it power1 and now you have to use the right syntax so use uh, capital Y equals and then when I put three parameters here it opened up three parameters here and we can refer to these parameters using either this name or this name so the power function would be I'm going to use that first one. So pound A is the first parameter uh, times uh, capital X and then a caret for the exponential and pound B will be the, um, the exponent. And then I want to add to that a constant. So I'll go out front with a uh, constant C. Okay, so there it is. You have to use capital Y equals some function capital X and then these um, these pound sign A, B, and C correspond to these values here. Now when we do this estimate we need to give it starting values. That's going to always be the case and we may need to bound the value for the of the parameter. Uh, in this case the default bounds are very um, large negative number and a very large positive number and we'll just go with those defaults for now and see if it works then we're, we're okay but we may have to adjust them so I'm just going to keep these defaults and take a look at what the this function looks like so here's the data and the function is down here you can barely see it that's what the function looks like with these default values of parameters. So let me try increasing the exponent. Let's go back here. Try increasing it. So I made it squared and changed it a little bit. Uh, now this is the coefficient out front. Let me try changing that. So we get a, a quick response so there's a 10 maybe make it 100 um, there we go actually that's looking pretty good so I've uh, you can do it with these sliders too you can change the values of the parameters with the sliders so we can um, adjust the parameters here get some feedback and this is useful to get the user defined function uh, in the right ballpark if it's not then it may have difficulty uh, finding a, a, a fit okay so we go and do that we hit check and now we go and fit UDF and 
when this line or this bar goes across then it has done the the fit so we'll check it out and so there's the fit this is our um, UDF called power one and these are the parameter values and um, it seems to fit really pretty well uh, and let's see we can try uh, adjusting the scaling a little bit so there's what happens when we extrapolate what what we get in this case is that the discharge ends up going to zero with the stage equal to about it looks like that's what about 0.7 and so you know this may or may not be uh, appropriate uh, we it may extrapolate out like this but um, if if it's flow going over a weir for example then uh, the the stage may be measured from a datum that is uh, point uh, say that's uh, say that's point eight um, feet the, the the data may be 0.8 feet below the bottom of the weir and so once the water level gets to that point it's right at the level of the weir and there's there's no flow going over the weir so it, this could indeed be a reasonable representation of what happens in the field and so I, th I think this would be a good function to to go with fairly simple there's just three parameters and we get the, the estimates of it using this uh, user defined function within uh, table curve so we can go here to the um, numeric let's close this go here to numeric we get the values of the parameters as well as the confidence limits and we can see that the confidence limits are pretty small um, percentage wise so we're able to estimate these parameters really pretty well so this looks like a good function to use to represent these data so there are a variety of other things that can be done here with the plots um, yeah we might be interested in turning on the confidence intervals and the prediction intervals uh, there they are and uh, log scales maybe a variety of other things here I would just recommend that you peruse those various alternatives and, uh, and, and see what they do they have uh, different applications depending upon what it is that you want to use the software for